and a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network, where tonight we finish the regular season for the O'Galley Commodores and the Rockledge Raiders as they get set to do battle in 5A District 13 action. The Raiders come in at 17-3, and three, coming off the heels of a, an uncharacteristic loss for them last night to the Villages, and they're going to take on the O'Galley Commodores, who are 14-9, and nine, Kind of stalled a little bit here over the last week and a half. But, Jackson, um, welcome. Uh, I know you got the starters for the Raiders. Yeah, for the Raiders tonight, uh, you have number zero, Kamari Phillips. Number one, Trenton Connolly. Number four, Brevard Sports Network Player of the Year candidate, Jordan White. Number 11, Howard Graham. And number 21, C.J. Kearns. All right, and your starters for the O'Galley Commodores. Number one, Jamez Chambers. Number two, Derek Collins. Number four, Jake Hillier. Number five, Robert Stafford. And number 11, Sean Armstrong. Those will be your seniors tonight. As far as this series is concerned, Rockledge is 13-3 and all-time against the Commodores. The last win for O'Galley back on January 20th, 2020. The Raiders have won three in a row and five of six and 12 of the last 14 against O'Galley. The Commodores are led by Brad Lustick. He is in his seventh year. He's 79 and 91, but over the last five years, he has really won the bulk majority of the games for this program. And uh, for Coco, led by head coach uh, Tracy Williams. In his last three years, he's 88 and 19, which is an incredible record. And the Raiders sitting at a seven, uh, 17 and three record this 58, season. 58. Or 58 and 11, my Still bad. Still an incredible record. Or 58 and 19. 58 and 19, so an incredible record. Um, as he has led, he led Rockledge to a 24 and 5 record last year, 17 and 3 record uh, this year, and two years back, they went 17 and 11. So. All right, Jackson and I do this the old fashioned way. He's going to call Rockledge, I'm going to call O'Galley. Hilliard going up for the jump, and uh, Rockledge controls. I'm going to go Rockledge Graham. Uh, gets it off the tip over to Kamari Phillips. Phillips over on the wing. Finds White. Or that's not White. Inside. And that ball knocked out of bounds by O'Galley. Still possession. Rockledge on the baseline. Passing in for the Raiders will be Kamari Phillips. Phillips goes all the way up top to Kearns. Kearns now over now to Phillips. Kamari Phillips. On the wing, back up top to Graham. Now inside, that's White. White posting up, and it, that shot's blocked. White will get the ball back for Rockledge. Back over to the corner, Phillips inside. Good move by White, layup no good. Rebound White, second chance no good. Rebound, will go Rockledge. Graham, back up top over White. Back up top, that's Howard Graham. Resetting, now at the top of the key, Graham. Trying to make a move, finds Phillips. Phillips driving inside, stepping back outside. Connolly from three, no good. Rebound, Coco one, or Rockledge once again. Kamari Phillips all the way across, finds Graham, corner, Connolly fakes. I tell you what, Jackson, the thing that I like already if you're a Commodore fan, I don't know if they can keep up this pace, is they're contesting every shot inside the lane. And the fact that the Raiders continue to get the offensive rebounds is a good sign for Rockledge. Definitely so. Kamari Phillips all the way over to the corner, high pass. Oh, that ball looking for White. And that one gets out, and it's stolen by O'Galley. Nice job there by Jamez Chambers, and he'll bring it across the midcourt timeline. Down the lane, underneath, off the glass, no good. That was Derek Collins that missed that shot, and that ball goes back to the hands of the Raiders. And here comes Kamari Phillips with a fast pace back up top to Graham. They'll slow it down, reset. Graham over to Kamari Phillips. Phillips finds White. Jordan White rolling around outside. Again to Graham inside, bounce pass to White. White double team, stolen again by O'Galley. Nice job by Sean Armstrong to strip that ball away. Great defense so far being played 
by O'Galley. This is Jake Hilliard, the leading scorer with it. Back to Armstrong. They'll hand it off outside the perimeter at the volleyball line. This is Stafford with it. Stafford all county athlete inside to Armstrong. Armstrong underneath the Hilliard. Patiently waits for White to come through. The patience pays off as Hilliard knocks the, the uh, layup down and he'll get the end one to the free throw line. Hilliard is 61% free throw shooter. Two to nothing. O'Galley looking to make it three. Hilliard's shot is up and good, and the Commodores lead it three nothing. Hilliard made a smart play there. He jumped while uh, while the defender was coming down, drawing the foul and putting up a good shot. Now here comes Rockledge. Phillips, defense so far by O'Galley's been great. Connolly. Connolly. Oh, underneath White. The pass. The pass by Kearns goes long. And we got O'Galley possession once again. It's obvious to me head coach Brad Lustig came into this game tonight and the thing that he was preaching was defense, 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 defense. It's tough to play back-to-back -back games and you know Rockledge came in here wanting to avenge that loss last night. This is Armstrong with it in the corner baseline now. Nice bounce pass to Hilliard. Hilliard in the lane off the glass. He's got all five. It's five nothing Commodores. O'Gala's looking good right now leading 5-0. Uh, here comes uh, Rockledge once again, Phillips. The defense has been great. That pass high. Kearns flying. Wow. Tries to get it out. Stolen by O'Galley. And that's Hilliard off the block by Collins. Stafford and O'Galley running away here early. 7-0. Long way to go, but they'll take the 7-0 start. They definitely will. I mean, they lost to Rockledge earlier this season only by three. Connolly from, from three, no good, rebound O'Galley. Hilliard again, he's got five of the seven and now two boards, Stafford down the lane. Oh. What a move by Stafford and it's nine nothing O'Galley. That's four for him. That Euro step was clean and now it's Rockledge. Again, White over, switching back up top, now Connolly. Crowd's loving it for O'Galley right now. Graham stepping back, rolling outside. Graham puts one up. That one's off the mark. Right now, Rockledge just doesn't seem to have a whole lot of confidence in their shot. They'll settle down. Underneath, bounce pass to Collins. Collins in trouble. C.J. Kearns on him. Finds the glass. Good defense by Kearns. And now here comes Rockledge. He got, got some tempo here, Phillips. Back outside, White, open from three, got it. That's how you settle it down. There you go. Give it to your, give it to your, give it to your man, Jordan yep. White. Jordan White with the three to cut the lead to six. It's nine, three, and here comes the press. Uh, they break it quickly, Armstrong to Collins, off the glass, and it's 11-3 O'Galley. No, O'Galley's looking hot right now, leading by eight, 11-3. Taken up once again for Rockledge, Kamari Phillips. Phillips driving inside, back outside, another three. That one a little bit long, and here comes O'Galley. Rebound to Stafford, he's got Collins on the wing, and that'll be off of Stafford's thigh and out of bounds, and we've got substitutions for Rockledge. Subs coming for Rockledge, Q Tillman, and I don't have a number 12 on my roster. Also coming in number 15, Joey Falcone. I love about Tracy Williams, there's never any panic in him. You know, a lot of coaches would have sat right there and taken a timeout, brought their guys off the court, especially coming off of a loss last night. He didn't do that. He let his guys play out of it. Whether they played out of it or not, I don't know yet. We'll see. But I do like the confidence that he instills in his players by not panicking. Definitely a key asset as a coach. Falcone on the outside, back up top to Phillips driving now back to the outside back up top to Phillips Phillips in the wing Falcone from three a little short rebound O'Galley that's Stafford with it now who does who do they have as number 12 on the Rockledge roster there uh, I got nobody all right I'm gonna tell you who it is in just a second go ahead and we got a steal Falcone up ahead Phillips no one near him fast break layup is good and the Raiders start running here they've cut the lead to seven it's 11 to five still a man up 
Number 12 is Jaden Orham. All right. So now, O'Galley with the ball now. This is Hilliard. That is Kamar playing in the game now. Collins with it. Collins baseline underneath. Yes, indeed. 13-5. Can't let him have it. But they did. And Collins drops it down. Now here comes Phillips once again across half court. Eight point lead right now, O'Galley. 118 to go in the first quarter. Good pressure there. Orem inside. White shot blocked. And stolen right back by Orem. And that's a travel. Oh my. I'll tell you what, O'Galley is not letting anything easy inside that four foot range and a semicircle around that basket. Jake Hilliard with three blocks in the game now. Armstrong over to Plain. Kamar Plain bounce pass, nearly stolen away. Gets it back to Stafford, who's got four in the game. Scores 13-5, O'Galley on top. Nice job there by Rockledge. Falcone tried to strip him, does, and Falcone will be called for a reach-in foul. Mari Phillips does an amazing job at both ends of the floor. You can count, Jordan White plays great defense, but Kamari Phillips, the guy defensively is like unbelievable. This is plain, stolen away. Oh, White with the is. steal, fast break, White, oh, the one-handed slam. Fast break dunk, Jordan White. Lead cut to six for O'Galley. That'll get the fans charged up from the visiting Rockledge Raiders. 13-7, Armstrong now. Stuck, double team, Falcone, great defensive play, he's got it. Stolen away now by Rockledge. Here comes Tillman all the way down, heave to Phillips. Only 10 seconds to go in the first, outside, White, back up top, over to Falcone. Five seconds now. Outside, that pass, too much on it. Can't be handled, out of bounds off of Rockledge. O'Galley's got the ball at three seconds. All right, maybe 3.1 seconds. Let's see what Coach Brad Lustig calls here. Maybe he could steal a half quarter here. Back to Armstrong at the buzzer. Shot, no good. We've reached the end of the first quarter. And a fast-paced first quarter, it was. It was, uh, I'll tell you what, O'Galley came out like a unbelievable, like wildfire, running through a dry California forest. And it's 13-7. Commodores. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think what we might be seeing is just well, I mean, definitely O'Galley coming out here prepared, but Rockledge lately has suffered a few losses very recently. The Villages and Satellite in the Cape Coast Conference Championship game. So I just think, you know, I mean, Rockledge is an incredible team. I, as I said earlier, a top two team of our county, I believe. So once they get rolling, it could become dangerous. But if O'Galley simply doesn't let them get rolling, then it's their game. Uh, it's their game to lose. O'Galley needs this because, you know, if, if you had to say who needed this game more, it's O'Galley. And the reason is is the the rankings came out yesterday. Today, actually, they came out. Rockledge is the third-ranked team in 5A Region 4. Their RPI is 14.693. O'Galley, eighth. They're eighth. They're ranked eighth. So they're right on that cusp if they don't win the district tournament of an at-large bid. Their RPI is a 9.614. So they, they, they desperately... You know, they get this win tonight, and I think that they can assure themselves or at least tilt the odds heavily in their favor that they would pick up an at-large bid if they didn't win the district tournament. Rockledge is in either way. Yeah, and, I mean, the win with the RPI, it's on a team that is ranked higher than you, so that gives you an even bigger boost than just your average win. Uh, so now Rockledge with possession inside finds Kearns. Kearns back outside. Finds Falcone back up top to Graham. Graham outside, Falcone. Falcone driving inside. Great defense, O'Galley steal. Great steal again. Derek Collins with it. Collins twists, turns. Gets it out to Kamar. Playing for three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound to the uh, Rockledge Raiders. Orem with it now over to the corner. Three. Too much. Too long there. Good rebound by Falcone. Back up top to Graham. Graham over to Orem. 
Or I'm inside to Kearns. CJ Kearns backing it in. Rolling around, big man puts one up. Nice High ball. arcing layup is good. Now a 4.0 galley lead. CJ Kearns using the, that's why they put the box on the glass. Playing with some nice dribbling across the timeline. Orem on him, Falcone on Armstrong. Armstrong dribbles down the lane, pulls up from the free throw line, no good. And Kearns blocks out and gets the board. And now here comes, here comes Rockledge, 13-9, uh, six and a half to go in the first half. Falcone from three to cut it to one. Not enough on that one. And that'll be O'Galley ball on the baseline. Falcone at the last minute decided against the shot and it caught him. You could see his legs, they just, the hesitation caught him and the ball ended up going out of bounds. 6.25 to play in the first half. 13 to nine, Commodores on top. But so far, nothing in quarter number two. Robert Stafford with it. We saw O'Galley come out strong against Melbourne a couple weeks ago, and the Bulldogs came all the way back to win. Convincingly, I might add. So that ball goes out of bounds, and Tillman inbounds. Now here comes Rockledge once again, taking up past midcourt. It'll be Howard Graham this time. Actually, pass over to Orem. Jaden Orem. Oh, and that'll be popped out and stolen by O'Galley. Nice job there by O'Galley and finishing it off. And it's 15 to 9 was Jake Hilliard. Good steal by Jamez Chambers. And now Rockledge with it. Once again, Graham, the give and go back to Graham. And back up top, Kearns all the way, three by Orem. Oh, that, that had a good spin on it. And that's a great, uh, much needed three by Rockledge. Cuts the lead down to one possession, three point game. Rockledge has come all the way back to cut this lead to three at 15 to 12. And Armstrong to Hilliard. Over to Collins, back to Armstrong, underneath to a cutting Hilliard. Hilliard, he gets the bounce off the glass. And the lead is back to five at 17 12 for Galley. One thing, uh, Rockledge did good there underneath. Although he made the shot, they didn't jump for the pump fake. So the reaction was good there. Falcone, oh. he's blocked. Out of bounds. It'll stay oh. Rockledge ball, but a great block. Subs coming in. Uh, three starters come back in the game for Rockledge Kamari Phillips, Trenton Connolly, and Jordan White. Look, they come in all the way back with those three sitting on the bench. So they can get it moving and gelling. The Raiders are in good shape here, moving forward with 4.55 to go in the half. Back up top to Kearns, over to Graham. I believe they got their starting five back on the court. Phillips from three, got wow. it! Leaner, and the lead is cut down to two. The lowest it's been since uh, I two to zero. I'll tell you what, it's uh, you can't trade threes for twos, and right now Rockledge is hitting all their threes. Nice pick by Hilliard. Stafford back to Hilliard from the free throw line. He drops it in, and the lead is four at 19-15 O'Galley. O'Galley's gonna keep uh, uh, larging their lead. Rockledge has gotta keep doing what they're doing on the offensive side. Now that pass goes long. That's not how you do that. And that'll be O'Galley ball on the sideline now. All right, that'll be a turnover, and Rockledge was rolling until that turnover. 4.18 to go. What a great signing day it was here in Brevard County today. We'll recap it coming up later tonight on Brevard Sports Network. This is Chambers with it. Again, Hilliard with the pick, Chambers underneath. And that'll go off of Falcone and out of bounds. Or no, check that, uh, Connolly and out of bounds. Armstrong inbounds to Chambers, the 5'11 senior over to Hilliard. Back to Collins, Chambers. Collins, nice head fake by Hilliard, and Hilliard doing what he does best, scoring points. The lead is back to six, 21-15 O'Galley. Before you realize that that lead is back to six, it was down at two just a minute ago. Phillips rolling around now for Rockledge. Kern sets a screen. Phillips over to Connolly. Connolly back up top. White got an open three from the top. No good off the front of the rim, rebound Kearns. Back outside, another three. Good, that one will spin in you, for Howard Graham. You can, and you can see the frustration in the inbound pass from Chambers. But you can only be frustrated at yourself. You cannot, first of all, you can't leave Jordan White 
that wide open for a, a, a three. That's got to be corrected. This is Armstrong with it. And he'll pull up and take the three. And now that's a force three battling underneath. And Collins with a good job to come up with that offensive rebound. And Derek Collins, the second leading scorer on the team, will go to the free throw line for a two-shot foul. 2.57 to play in the first half. It's 21 to 18, O'Galley on top. O'Galley 58% as a team from a charity strike. First free throw attempt is up, and it's good, and the lead is back out to four at 22-18. Yeah, on that play, Coach uh, Tracy Williams is saying his hands are straight up, but uh, uh, Kearns was a little aggressive, um, almost pushing, so. It's, it's, it's an understandable foul called by the officials. Second shot off the mark, rebound at Rockledge. Graham over to Connolly in the corner. Four point lead for O'Galley. Wow. Connolly, bounce pass inside, back to White. Blocked again by Hilliard. Right back to White though. And now stolen again by O'Galley. And here comes Robert Stafford. Stafford is so fast. And there's a steal by Phillips. It was four on one for Rockledge. Connolly's layup, almost an and one. Connolly will go to the line for two shots. And what you saw there was a good run by O'Galley off the steal, but then it was a 4v1 for Rockledge versus one O'Galley, which does not work out most times. Conley wanted that end one, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was close to it, but it'll take us two shots. Trent Conley at the line. Kamar Plain set the check back in for O'Galley. He will. First shot drops for Conley. Three-point lead, 22-19 O'Galley. 2.33 to go in the first half. Both teams staying most pretty clean on fouls. Uh, Rockledge with three, O'Galley with two, with only two and a half to go in the half. And Connolly, that one just bounces out. Three point game. Hilliard with the board off the miss. Armstrong back to Hilliard down the lane. Nearly had it stripped away. Armstrong is there. Nice bounce pass over to Collins. Collins backs it up. Blaine tried to tap it out, but Connolly will come away with it. And now here comes Rockledge Phillips. Looking for a pass here. Phillips into the corner to Graham. Graham inside. White near the lane. Graham back outside. White in the corner will pull up. Pull wow. it up and nothing but net. And we have a tie game for the first time since 0 0 with 150 to go in the first half. The Raiders have made up the 9 0 deficit. But all the way back down the floor, Derek Collins takes the easy bucket on the baseline. The lead is back to two, 24-22. Good play there as Kearns fell to try and get the foul call. He had a wide open shot. Now there's Kearns for Rockledge. Connolly back up top to Graham in the corner. Phillips, Phillips all the way back up top. White, White just from inside the arc. No good rebound, Graham backing it up. Getting his team reset. Howard Graham, bounce pass. Phillips driving for the tie off the glass, it's good. You can see that's right where he was going with the ball. And let me just say this, CJ Kearns is a rebounding machine. This is Collins, Kearns, and out of bounds. And that's gonna be O'Galley basketball. Kearns is 6'7 as a sophomore. 24-22, Commodores on top. Jamez Chambers set to inbound here. He does to Armstrong for three. No, oh, he got it. And it's 27-24, O'Galley under a minute to play. 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we got the three-point contest right now. Eye for an eye right now. Three-point lead, O'Galley driving inside around the world, layup no good. Rebound, O'Galley. Shot no good by Graham. Underneath, Collins with it. Collins got to move his feet, he does. Pulls up, no good, and Kearns is there. Phillips running it out for Rockledge, driving in lane, back outside, Connolly pumps, gets him to jump. All the way across, wide open three by Graham for the tie. A little long rebound, and White will be fouled, fighting for the ball. I don't and think that's a shooting foul though, so. That'll be an inbound play with 10.6 seconds to go in the first half and a 27-24 Commodore lead. 
and checking in right now for defensive purposes is going to be Aiden Smith. Hey, yeah, 10 seconds. O'Galley leads by three. Rockles will most likely look for a three, but they won't force it. Nope, they'll just go straight into Graham. Tip in, no good. Out of bounds, no. Lane. Here comes O'Galley. Armstrong again pulls up and no good, but we have reached halftime here on the campus of O'Galley High School with your score, the O'Galley Commodores 27, the Rockledge Raiders 24 in that quarter as the first belonged to O'Galley. That quarter was pretty much all Rockledge as they outscored uh, O'Galley in that one. 17, well, not really, 17 14. So, yeah, I mean, all right, what do you got, buddy? It's been a tight half for sure. I mean, O'Galley came out firing, but Rocco's just slowly chipping away at the lead. Now, what they got to do is strike, take that lead, and then keep slowly growing it and then take control of the game. See if we can't recap some of these signings here for you that took place today. You know, over at Cocoa High School for the football team, 13 players. There were five high school football players here today. Head coach Chris Sands, 28, count them, 28 scholarships in four years for Commodore football players. Not a bad deal, Jackson. That is for sure. Not at all. I mean, that's that's a great number for these Commodores. And, I mean, they got, they got a bright future. Um, definitely in this program and that's uh, all due to being under head coach Chris Sands this program's definitely moving the right direction and you know all the all the great all the great scholarships they've had um, just are uh, great to see for the county and uh, for O'Galley as a program then you go to Melbourne who had signings tonight Justice Durant down at uh, Bayside and Merritt Island of course had four volleyball players Inc national letters of intent you had some softball players over at Rutgers so We'll recap all of that for you tonight on Brevard Sports Network. We'll get the list up of everybody that signed and where they're going and what they're doing. And I tell you, it's just been uh, been a whirlwind of a day, and it began at Holy Trinity this morning. And I thought really with one of the more interesting quotes of the day, and that came from Tyler Engelhart, who his father used to be the head football coach at Florida Tech and is now the press or the new head football coach for the Presbyterian Blue O's. And Caleb asked him, because Engelhart committed to go play football at Presbyterian. And Caleb said, well, aside from your dad, what was the reason that you chose to go to Presbyterian? And, and I thought Engelhart gave just a true blue honest answer when he said, I actually didn't want to go there. He said, uh, I really didn't want to attend. But the other coaches had reached out to me and assured me that they wanted me because not because my dad was there. And I just thought that was a great way to start the day. And uh, love it when student athletes are honest. And of course, if, if you know, if you know Ty Engelhart, um, you know what a great kid he is. And we saw we saw multiple athletes across Brevard County commit to Presbyterian today. So it, it's cool to see you know one school even just you know reach out to many um, athletes from the county and just kind of actually you know get to know these guys because we got plenty of athletes that are just outstanding players in just throughout Brevard County. You'll hear stellar players say, you know, how's recruiting going? Oh, I got, you know, pretty much nothing. Like some of these players deserve this. And it's great to see Presbyterian, which they had at least three or four uh, commits just out of Brevard County today. So you go to Melbourne High School, Devin Owls committed to Virginia Tech. He did that uh, last night. Uh, Vic Battle Jr. over at Coco, Culver Stockton College in California. Michael Baumgartner at a Merritt Island Daytona State Baseball. How about uh, Brady Denenberg, the foot? He's going to go to Syracuse University. He's going to kick in the dome up there, and he follows in the footsteps of Nathan Trout, the great Merritt Island kicker who went to Syracuse and broke numerous school records. Ryan Black, of course, one of my favorite football players, uh, committed a long time ago to Coastal Carolina football. Katie Kallenberger. Uh, the last lone holdout on Merritt Island as to where she was going to go play volleyball. How about Augusta? Uh, Kaleo Carrera, 
from Palm Bay to St. Thomas. Jamez Chambers right here watching him play tonight. He's going to go play for St. Thomas. Jafari Clark out of Melbourne to Presbyterian College. Uh, Kalia Clary from West Shore to Ave Maria swimming. Dylan Collins, Holy, Tr Holy Trinity to Emory University. You saw that signing live this morning on Brevard Sports Network. Cody Daltrich right here at O'Galley heading to where uh, you had mentioned earlier. You saw a lot of student athletes heading to Presbyterian. Kobe or Cody Daltrich, one of them. Uh, Andrew Diaz out of Rockledge heading to Weber International for football. Justice Durant going to Shorter from Bayside. Yamari Dixon uh, to Florida Memorial. Ty Englehart, we mentioned already, to Presbyterian. Justin Evans from Palm Bay to St. Thomas. DJ Grimes from Coco to Southwestern Oklahoma State. Uh, Seamus Feeney out of Merritt Island. Uh, Going to go play college soccer at Flagler. Uh, Tamale Hayes out of O'Galley to uh, Concord football. That's uh, Pork Chop Hayes, by the way. C.J. Henry from Palm Bay to Missouri Valley College. Marcus Hopkins today from Coco told a beautiful story. Cried up on the podium as he thanked his parents for adopting him and bringing him to this country to afford him the opportunity to go do what he's about to go do. Congratulations to you, Marcus Hopkins. Uh, Well-deserved. He's going to play at Alabama A&M. Uh, Jonah Kirk at an astronaut to Long Island University Gymnastics. How about Dawson Clunes out of Melbourne to Davenport? Malik Lewis from Coco to, again, Presbyterian. Uh, Katie Lippert from astronaut to Eastern Florida State. Swipe Marshall headed to Western Kentucky. Uh, Grant Paparella from Merritt Island heading to Andrew College Baseball. Maddox Moss from Merritt Island to FAU football. Jordan Patrick from Merritt Island Volleyball to Wallace State Volleyball. Taylor Rendina from Astronaut to Bridgeport for gymnastics. Macy Reynolds from Merritt Island to Point Loma Nazarene for volleyball. Jamari A. Robinson from Coco heading to Missouri State. O.J. Ross, uh, this was a, a holdout here that we didn't know until today. He's going to Tennessee Tech. He joins A.J. Hall, the former Rockledge Raider. Uh, Macy Sinclair from Merritt Island Volleyball to St. John's River. Daryl Smith from Rockledge to Tusculum. Uh, Lily Swoyer, Swoyer from Astronaut to Eastern Florida State for softball. Leonard Tony from Coco to Florida State. L.J. Turner, the state of Florida's leading rusher during the course of the year from Heritage to Catawba College in North Carolina. Jacroy Waddell from Astronaut to St. Thomas. Thomas Wadsworth from Melbourne to UCF. Emily Witt from Astronaut to Rollins College for softball. Jake Woods from Merritt Island to Kaiser football. Davin Widener from Coco to UCF football. And Victor Zidor from Coco to Allen University football. So those are some of the commitments that took place today. Uh, a lot of them you saw here on the Brevard Sports Network. So congratulations to all of those student athletes. Our score here, 27 to 24, O'Galley on top. Jackson, what are your first half thoughts? Well, you know, I, I, I saw a lot out of O'Galley just coming out of the locker room. They jumped out to a 9-0 lead uh, right up on this Rockless team. And then Rockless has, you know, had a, a, a slow comeback he had a powerful one throughout the second quarter, and they took or they tied the game at one point. Never could take the lead, but right now for O'Galley, it's kind of like they're just fending them off, um, just kind of matching whatever uh, Rockledge is doing, then one-upping that to keep that lead right now at three points. So if Rockledge can keep the comeback rolling, I mean they they can take control of this game um, with the talent on their team. But O'Galley's got quite a bit of talent too, and you know if they can just keep doing this. Just keeping Rockledge at bay, it's, I mean, they, they could be in control of this game just like that also. You know, I, I, this is one of these situations, and I love the way that O'Galley started, but this is one of those situations where if you're the Commodores, you have the lead, but I don't think you have the momentum at the moment. No. And I think if you're a, a team as, as good as the Raiders are, uh, you, you, you're going to have to come out here 
and what they did in that first quarter to win this basketball game, they're going to have to do again if you're O'Galley. Yeah, definitely. Like that, te- that 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 O'Galley that O'Galley team in the first quarter looked unstoppable, to be honest. And you know, if they can get back to playing like that, then they can be unstoppable. But as I said, for Rockwood, they just got to keep up that um, that just chipping away at the lead. And they ha- they are a team, uh, you know, as powerful as they are, um, that they can just once they take the lead, they can just take off and never look back. Well, we got about 30 seconds to go before we begin the second half. I believe the Rockledge Raiders will inbound the basketball to start. And you want to go over your original five starters there? Yeah, for Rockledge, you got number zero, Kamari Phillips. Number one, Trenton Connolly. Number four, Jordan White. Number 11, Howard Graham. And number 21, C.J. Kearns. And for the O'Galley Commodores, it was Jamez Chambers, Derek Collins, Jake Hillier, Robert Stafford, and Sean Armstrong are your starters as we get set to begin the second half of action. And it looks like all 10 original starters will start the second half for both teams. And for Rockledge, I'd like to mention again, number four, Jordan White is a player of the year nominee and uh, a great player. But why I bring that up is because O'Galley's done great tonight at containing him underneath and you know, forcing him outside, but then that brings up another point. They have left him open, I would say, one too many times from beyond the arc. So O'Galley, keep it up in the lane, and then you know, uh, just just uh, keep him contained uh, from three-point range. Well, I think the issue at hand here right now is we don't have any referees. That seems to be the case. So the players are ready, we're ready. Coach Lustig just went ran a 4-4-40 to go get him. I hope everything's all right. I cannot imagine that they would not. Oh, here they come. Dun, 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 dun. Give them a stand. Uh. (laughs) The players were standing at midcourt like they were going to jump. And we're going to start underneath the basket here. Rockledge to inbound the ball. Jackson's calling the Raiders. I'm calling the Commodores. No, we're not. We're going to start here as White will get set to inbound. Jordan White set to inbound for the Rockledge Raiders here to start the second half. The score, O'Galley 27, Rockledge 24, and our second half is underway. Kamari Phillips will take it up now to start. Phillips rolling inside. Back over to Kearns, stolen by the Commodores just nice. like that. Nice job by Stafford and Collins. We said that's what they would have to do, play as they played to start this game. So far, so good. 7.39, the Commodores with a three-point lead. Armstrong in the corner. Don't force it. Baseline pulls up too much. Rebound underneath goes off of Collins. Back to the Raiders. Yeah, a little little bit long there, and Rockledge will benefit, and they'll get the ball on the baseline. Again, trailing by three here. And they don't necessarily have to attack the three. They have no pressure. Got the whole second half in front of them. Phillips with uh, with the pressure. Now over to Graham. Back over to Kearns. Over to Connolly. Connolly on the wing. Up top, that's Phillips. Now Graham on the wing. All the way across. Finds Kamari Phillips for three to tie it. And off the back of the iron, rebound, Commodores. Armstrong finds it under the basket. Across the timeline, Connolly on him. Armstrong underneath. Collins didn't even look at the bucket. Thought he had an open shot there. He'll get it out to Jamez Chambers, who committed today to play football at St. Thomas. And he stepped on the out of bounds line. That turnover, those are the types of turnovers that start runs. Jackson, 27 24, ball back to the Raiders. Uh, yep, here comes Phillips once again for the Raiders. Pass from White. Now all the way over, back up top. Connolly inside. Phillips back up top to White. White backing it in. Double team. Oh, and my. White will be fouled. And I don't, that Hillier. will be a shooting foul. Jake Hillier got called for the foul. And that's the only call. I disagree with that they've made. The, the MCOA, the Mid Coast Officials Association, Jackson this year, has done a terrific job. Basketball games have flowed. You saw how fast that first half went. 
Yeah. First shot by White is good. 27-25. Connolly shoot, or sorry, White shoots. Can't find a uh, percentage, but nevertheless, a great free throw shooter. Uh, Jordan White is now the lead at 4 galley cut to one, 27-26. Stafford across the timeline with it, dribbled out of control, stolen away. Connolly, fast break, Graham for the lead. Layup is good off the fast break, and the Raiders surprisingly take their first lead of the game. Here was 6-10 to go in the third quarter. They lead 28-27. Raiders up by a point here, six minutes to go. They've come all the way back. Their largest deficit was nine. They've come all the way back from that. They need a bucket bad here. This is Chambers with it over to Collins. Collins thought about that three. Hilliard cuts to the basket. Collins down the lane. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul. A non-shooting foul. And this will be an inbound play that needs to be set up by O'Galley. Robert Stafford set the inbound here. So far to start half number two, the Raiders have outscored O'Galley four, nothing. This is Hilliard from the elbow, good. And O'Galley with a much needed two, and they're back on top by a point. What a shot too, the step back, post up, and beautiful shot, gives O'Galley the lead back, but here comes Phillips now for the Raiders. Kamari Phillips back up top to White. Jordan White for the lead. A little bit too long, rebound, Hilliard. You know, the one criticism I would have there is you gotta follow your shot. Robert Stafford gives it underneath to Collins. That's four, battling two underneath, out of bounds. And the referee says ball back to the Raiders. If you're Jordan White, you gotta follow up that three. Because if he does, he ends up with his own rebound there. And that he would, but now Kamari Phillips with the ball for the Raiders now with their another chance trailing by one. And he shot would take the lead. Alley -oop! Wow! Alley -oop slam Jordan White from Kamari Phillips gives the Raiders the lead. He says, Shut up, Allen. Let me show you how I follow up. And Armstrong with it bounce pass behind his back to Collins. Three. Yes, indeed. And back and forth we go. 32-30 O'Galley. O'Galley saying, you know, that was that was cool, but let's keep it, let's keep it fundamental and just shoot. Back to the outside. Connolly for the lead again. Rims out. Rebound O'Galley. Down the floor, Collins. And that's a five-point run. And the Commodores back out to a four-point lead. And this, that's how quick this game has swung so far. Commodores lead 34-34 minutes ago in the third. Three by Graham. Yes. And that one's good. Nothing but net. One point lead now for the Commodores. 34-33. O'Galley on top. He says, come on, let's go. And they go. Collins in the lane. That won't fall. Rebound. Jordan White. He's got Connolly up ahead. Slow it down. Now get Connolly in the corner. Back over to Kearns. Kearns inside to Graham. No looker outside to Connolly. Connolly driving underneath the basket. Back up top. Phillips for the three and the lead. Oh! oh. Barely touched the net. And we got an O'Galley timeout here. And Raiders lead by two, 36-34, 3.20 to go in the third. They have officially caught fire. From the alley oop to White to the three by Phillips, Rockledge is playing their game right now. Brad Lustig sensed it and took the time out. Yeah, this is that's what I'm, that's what I was saying. Rockledge is just they have that capability as a team that once they once they start going, they just they catch fire and then it is extremely hard to stop them. And this is a good time timeout uh, by Coach Brad Lustig to kind of get his team regrouped and say, hey, we're not out of this. I mean, we've been playing. We've been playing lights out so far. We just can't, we can't slip up now. We can't crumble now. Look, this is the second time this year these two teams have played. They got together back on January the 20th. That was a three point Rockledge win. They'll play again uh, as the district tournament comes up next week. The 5A, uh, uh, class 5A district 13 tournament's coming up. So, you know, these two teams, we're potentially looking at two games where 
one possession is the difference in both of them. I just have one of those those senses as a broadcaster that this this one's gonna be a great one. It, it just has that potential. Both these teams going back and forth, but it all it all starts here. Surprisingly, Vogali can stop almost a great steal there. But if, if Vogali can stop Rockledge from really taking a big lead, I mean this one will probably go down to the wire. But if Rockledge can really catch fire and you know keep it burning, then this one could be done just like that. Armstrong set to inbound. It's Armstrong, Chambers, Stafford, Collins, and Hilliard for Oak. Oh There's my. a steal by Phillips. No one near him. Fast break layup gives Rockledge a four point lead. Their first two possession lead of the game. That's officially having your pocket pick right there. Nice job by Phillips. The largest lead of the game for the Raiders. And they nearly stole it away again. And that's going to be a foul against Rockledge. Nah, they're going to call that against uh, O'Galley, I believe. No, they called it black? Yeah. I thought he said white four. No, bogala has uh, still got possession. All right. That goes against Jordan White. This is Kamara playing with it. Over to Derek Collins. Collins takes it to the hole. The bad pass goes to Orem who's checked in. Now straight underneath Phillips. Ball knocked up in the air. And that'll be Rockledge ball. And the refs in the stands won that O'Galley's way. From my angle, I couldn't see who, it, who knocked it up in the air. White. Jordan White back up top to Orem. Now to Graham. Howard Graham. Now over to Orem. Jaden Orem with it now. Hilliard looking for the steal. That's Tillman now over to uh, Graham. Howard Graham stepping back. Now White at the top gives to Phillips. Phillips over to Tillman. Graham driving back up top. Tillman over to Orem. Two minutes to go in the third. Back outside now. Graham driving. Kicks outside. Open three by Tillman. Got it. And... This might just be the Raiders catching fire. They lead by seven. 150 to go. And if you're the O'Galley Commodores, this is really starting to get away from you. Playing across the timeline. Stafford with it in the lane. And nearly had the end one. Robert Stafford will go to the free throw line. No, they call a charge. They call a charge on Stafford. That will go back to the Rockledge Raiders. Great play in the lane. I don't, I did not see who it was uh, that caught that uh, caught the charge, but that's a good play. You see a man driving on you. You know, I might not be able to uh, stop this shot from going in. Take the charge, stay on your ground. And that's exactly what, what was done there. The key to taking the charge is the discipline of not moving your feet. That is definitely the key component of it. And now here comes Rockledge again, leading by seven. Minute and a half to go in the third. And Orem getting double team here comes Falcone Falcone layup is good and they tied the biggest lead of the game by either team at 9 43 34 118 to go in the third and in the blink of an eye it's a nine point Rockledge lead my one advice has my, got to get a bucket my one advice for a guy though don't panic don't start throwing up stressful shots do what you do what you were doing before Rockledge is flying all the way across the court they do have momentum but just play your game. Don't start stressing. Don't start throwing things up. Don't start throwing bad passes. It's still in your control. You know, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta channel it. One minute to go in the third quarter. This is Armstrong with it. Armstrong over to Collins and it passes behind him. And that's another turnover. And the Raiders now with an opportunity to take a double digit lead here. Surprisingly, neither team is taking a double-digit lead in this game. Here comes Graham. Rock is also trying to lead out of the quarter with some with some big momentum. Not trying to not trying to stall at all here. Orem screen from White doesn't doesn't quite help. In the corner, Graham. 40 seconds to go. Graham driving in. Can't find a pass all the way back to Orem. 30 seconds to go now in the third. Falcone inside. White. White, and gets stolen. Here comes O'Galley. All right, 22 seconds to go for the Commodores. 
Bounce pass in the corner to Collins. Collins, 360 off the glass. That's as pretty as it comes. Big bucket. 10 seconds to go. Falcone with an owl. Five seconds for the Raiders. Try to take a composed shot. Falcone underneath. Outside, white, wide open three at the buzzer. No good. Off the back of the iron. And at the end of the third quarter, the Rockledge Raiders lead the Old Galley Commodores by 7, 43 to 36. All right, Jackson, let's take a deep breath. Wow, huh? What a quarter. All Rockledge, though, really, when you think about it. Yeah, I mean. 43 36, they lead it now. That quarter right there, they score 16 points. Yeah, I mean, it's. That, that quarter looked good for Rockledge, but O'Galley showed, showed a little bit of resilience there at the end, got the steal, um, and then the, the great 360 layup. So, as I was saying before, they just don't need to stress. you got a whole quarter ahead of you. So much can change, as we've seen per each quarter. So much has changed, and, you know, O'Galley's just got to just gotta keep playing their game like they did in the first. That team is not any different than it was in the first quarter. That's just tonight, and it's the same thing. They just got to return to that, maybe get – not maybe definitely gets their momentum back rolling and you know start start they don't they don't have time to slowly chip they gotta take cut away from this lead and then uh take their win but for Rockledge just hold on check this sorry 19 points that quarter uh Rockledge outscored O'Galley 19 to 9 that quarter to take the seven point lead O'Galley will inbound, Sharn Armstrong. He does so to Kamar Plain. Final quarter of play. Whistle and a foul on Phillips. The foul situation is not a factor. It's two fouls apiece for each team. That foul called against Phillips. Falcone now steps over to guard the inbound and Phillips will guard Plain. Phillips trying his best not to foul. Over to Plain. It's Plain, Armstrong, Hilliard, Collins, and Stafford for O'Galley. Collins back underneath, kicks it out to Plain. No good. Rebound to the Raiders. Here comes Tillman. Tillman had a fast break, slows it down inside to Kearns. Kearns will trip, and that's a block. On O'Galley. So that'll be a Rockledge ball on the baseline. The referees in the stands don't like that call. No, they don't. Well, in the end, Kearns hit the deck. So, I mean, you got to make the call there. And, you know, they saw that uh, O'Galley had a block. Falcone not ready. He will haul it in, though, for Rockledge. Phillips with it now. 7.20 to go in the game. Rockledge leads by seven. Kamari Phillips outside to Orem. Orem rolling around back to Phillips. Now Phillips looking for the pass. Screened by Kearns. He goes the other way. Tillman from corner three. Rebound. It goes O'Galley. No good. Plain ahead to Hilliard. Hilliard backs it off. Takes it in. And Hilliard. Hard foul on Hilliard. He'll go to the line. Referee holds up two. So far tonight, he is four for four from the charity stripe. Needs these buckets here to cut the lead. Two, what would that be, five? Who you got in the Super Bowl, Jackson? Honestly, I'm going I'm going with the team who I see has been playing better lately. I got the Bengals. Yeah, I'm with you. Now the Rams have been struggling in any way, per se, but their games just feel tighter. The Bengals seem like they're in control. It just, I don't know, something, something about it. Something about it. I just feel feel like uh, you know, uh, Joe Burrow, he's got it in control right now. And uh, I got Cincy. And Hilliard hits the first. That'll cut the lead to six so, at 43-37. Subs checking in for Rockledge, Trent Connolly, Jordan White, and Howard Graham. And there's uh, number one came in for O'Galley. That was, um, that's uh, Chambers, you missed Chambers. And he hits them both, and the lead is five. 43-38, Rockledge leads, 6.52 to go in the game. Phillips, 
Phillips over to Graham. Howard Graham on the wing. Graham doesn't take Kern's screen. Back up top to Kearns. All the way underneath. Wow. Connolly with space. Layup is good. Lead back to seven. Connolly was wide open underneath. That's a defensive lapse. And Rockledge, I like the mentality with a full court press here. Or at least a man up press with a lead of seven points and 6.25 to play. This is Armstrong. Collins at the top of the three-point arc. He pulls up, no good. Rebound to Connolly. And now here comes Rockledge with, with a fast tempo. Phillips will have to slow it down, back it up. Takes current screen this time. Ball nearly poked out over the corner. Connolly wide open, three, got it! Connolly left wide open once again. And the biggest lead of the night for either team, a 10-point lead for Rockledge, 48-38. 5.56 to go in the fourth. I tell you what, it has been a uh, remarkable guy. I'm, I'm exhausted. A remarkable day ends here at O'Galley with signing day in a basketball game. Incredible. Yeah. I had school across and now this. Full day. We got soccer district finals going on. I have no idea what happened between uh, Melbourne, or not Melbourne, uh, Vieira and uh, South Fork. I know we got a ton of girls games tonight. I know Satellite was playing astronaut for a district championship. Uh, it just, you know what? It's a great time to be a sports fan in Brevard County. And you can see Vieira and South Fork on the Brevard Sports, or you could see it on the Brevard Sports Network. Caleb Brown was on the call. Um, so now here comes O'Galley with the ball. Stafford over to Armstrong for three. And Stafford has struggled, or uh, Armstrong, I should say, has struggled beyond the arc tonight. The lead stays at 10. It's 48 to 38 Rockledge with 544 to play in the game. It seems like Rockledge is in control here right now. Uh, 540 to go in the game. Rockledge leads by 10. Uh, here comes Phillips for the Raiders. Phillips back up top to Graham. Graham rolling off the screen by White. Graham, fast pass inside, stolen by Hilliard. Hilliard gonna try and take it coast to coast. He lays it off, no good. Too hard, CJ Kearns with the board. Up top, Phillips, fast break, blocked by Armstrong, rebound White, no good. White gets his own rebound back outside. Graham back at the top, I'm gonna slow it down. Back outside to Phillips. Five minutes to go in the game. Raiders lead by 10. Back up top now to Phillips. All the way back to Graham on the wing. Graham stepping back over to Kern. Back up top. Graham outside to Phillips. Phillips driving in. No looker to the outside. Graham corner. White looking inside. Kearns double team ball. And Kearns will be fouled. They get Hilliard with the hold. Gonna call that on Hilliard there. 48-38, 4.36 to go. Foul situation still of uh, no, con no, no consequences yet, four apiece. Raiders on top. Phillips will take it now for Rutgers on the base on side. Connolly, his defender turned around. Either way, shot just bounces out. Here comes O'Galley. Armstrong takes it across the timeline. In the corner here, this is Stafford back out to Hilliard. White's on him, the best on the best. This is Aiden Smith with it, gets it back to Jamez Chambers over to Hilliard. Cut in the corner too much, dangerous pass. Baseline, wide open for three is Chambers, and he hits it. Stafford, check that Stafford, and the lead is cut to seven. Rockledge up 48-41. That's a great start for O'Galley. Keep playing defense and shooting like that. They're still in this game. They just can't let Rockledge get going again. Connolly tightly guarded. Back up top of Heave. Finds Graham outside. Phillips wide open three. He's got to hit this and he will. Lead back to 10. Kamari Phillips. And we got a timeout on the floor. 51-41 Rockledge leads. 3.41 to go in the game. I said back in the first half, the player that you really got to keep your eye on. Jordan White's a great player and he is. And he's a Brevard Sports Network Boys Basketball Player of the Year candidate. But the player that's going to 
you know, seems to be the guy that delivers the dagger uh, is Phillips. And he almost single-handedly brought this team back against Satellite a week and a half ago in the Cape Coast Conference Championship game. I love the way he plays. I love his demeanor. Uh, and I think it's going to serve the Raiders well in the postseason. Hey, he's been looking good tonight on both sides of the ball. Here comes well, this young man got out there like he was going to do some kind of flip in here. Let's see if it happens. That's Pork Chop Hayes, who today signed his national letter of intent for Concord University to play football. So it's uh, O'Galley possession on the baseline here. 3.41 to go in the game. Rockwood's leading by 10. Got one more boys basketball game to do this week. Coco and Vieira, senior night for Coco Friday night. You're welcome to join me for that. And playing in the corner for Hilliard. Three-point shot, no good. Stafford's there with the floater. And it's 51-43. The lead is back to eight for Rockland. And now here comes Phillips once again. Taking it up now over to Connolly. Connolly back up top to Graham. Graham over to Phillips. Underneath, Kearns, the big man, looking for a shot. Fade away, layup wow. is good. Back to 10 for the Raiders. C.J. Kern just has a high basketball IQ. I love the way he plays the game. 10-point lead, 53-43, Raiders on top. Stafford with it. Back over to Armstrong, swings it around to Hilliard. Plains in the corner. Stafford, pocket pick. Ball on the floor, and the hustle by White. Sends it out of bounds and back to the Commodores. But a good, good hustle play by the Rockledge Raiders. Forces the inbound and all the way back down into Rockledge's third uh, third of the court. Plains, nice pass underneath. And the reverse layup by Collins. Has it 53-45, Rockledge. 2.25 to go in the game. Raiders lead by eight, 53-45. Connolly with the now on the wing for Rockledge. Over to the corner, bounce pass inside to Kearns. Kearns driving in, backing it up. And that pass nearly stolen by O'Galley. And we got our first jump ball of the game, which will go to O'Galley. Fifty-three, forty-five. Rockledge on top, two, 13 to play. I took care of it already. You can delete it. We were all Our, over that, weren't we? Uh, but actually, it was, it's Rockledge ball on the baseline back up top to Kearns. Kearns nearly stolen. Graham now gets left open off the glass. No good. Now here comes O'Galley. Hilliard with it. Plain with it now. Across the timeline. Under two. Rockledge, or O'Galley needs buckets in a hurry. Stolen away. He stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Back to O'Galley. Let's set the table for you. And Glustick's gonna take a timeout. So that'll give us the opportunity to do that. So here's the situation. Rockledge leads at 53-45, 1.51 to go. And right now, I gotta tell you, I am not at all optimistic uh, that O'Galley can overcome this deficit. No, I mean, as I mentioned, just when, once Rockledge kinda got their stride going, now all they have to do, just defend that lead. And that's what they've been doing. They haven't been letting O'Galley score on the other side. Um, and, you know, O'Galley's defense has been tight, but you got to follow up with some offense, which um, Rockledge has been able to prevent. So right now, Rockledge still in the driver's seat. But, you know, I mean, we saw some very quick runs out of O'Galley in the first half. They just got to start scoring and fast and in, uh, in quick succession with each other. There's head coach Tracy Williams for the Raiders. He's in his third year, 58 wins in three years, pretty impressive. Hilliard backs it in, he traveled, double dribble. Yeah, that's big now. It's 58-19 in three years. That's a big turnover for O'Galley. Phillips with it now for the Raiders. 140 to go in the game. 
And we got a rock with timeout from uh, head coach. And now 139 to go in the game. Raiders still lead at 53-45. There's 99 seconds to play in the game. So you ask yourself, Coach Williams takes a time out here. I think he's setting up a three-point play here, which would obviously deliver the dagger. That it would. That would even put it, if he could hit, uh, to the biggest lead of the game by either team, which would be 11, leading by eight. I mean, like, it's, it's kind of like a football, you know, one more first down. For Rockwood, it's just, you know, one or two more buckets, and you now you can pretty much just uh, ice it out, and that's definitely what it feels like right now for the Raiders, and if they can get a good play going right here under the timeout, uh, they can do exact, uh, exactly that. I think what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see, you're gonna try to break free whoever they feel or deem as the hottest three-point shooter, get him loose underneath Get him open in the corner and see if they can get a good look from the corner for three. Uh, Rockledge has been fantastic there all night long. Don't be surprised if this play is set up to get them another look from the corner for three. Rockledge trying to break their, uh, I believe, a short two-game losing streak to Satellite in the Villages with a win here tonight. Phillips with it now, trying to stay in bounds. And that'll be a push on O'Galley. Uh, still Rockledge possession. That's only O'Galley's fourth foul, I believe. That No, that'll be number five. So still no foul trouble. Uh, but, you know, as they'll most likely have to start fouling. And now back to Phillips once again coming to the ball. Kamari Phillips, one, one and a half to go in the game. White, Jordan White with it now rolling around the top. Wide open. Wide open, and they find Phillips. Wide open, corner three, the dagger, no good. Connolly with the great rebound. Back outside, White. Now back up top to Graham. Graham stepping back. Good defense by Armstrong, and a little bit too good. He'll he'll get, he'll pick up a foul. Foul number six, Rogali. One more, and uh, one more, and then you got Rockledge bonus. One eleven to go in the game. Rockledge still leads by eight. White will pass it in for the Raiders. White finds Phillips. Once again, Phillips. He spins down, falls down. O'Galley fast break, can't handle the dribble. Tried to get, I don't know if he lost, if he lost control of that, Stafford did. I thought he tried to grab it and get maybe too cute with it. Yep, and we got an official timeout here. And down on the floor is an injured Rockledge Raider. And we don't show injured players and we don't speculate on them. I got to, it's, it's muggy in the air, it's hot, and I got to imagine that that's a cramp. Kamari Phillips is who it is. He's up, standing, trying to stretch it out here. He's putting weight on that left foot and he's gonna, he's gonna come off here. I hate to see that with only 59 yeah. seconds. Yeah, 59 seconds. I don't expect to see Kamari Phillips back on the floor. So taking his spot, it looks like it's going to be number 11. Well, you got Jaden Orem's in too. Yeah, I think I think Orem filled, or was the sub that came in. So so Rockledge, Rockledge ball on the baseline. Connolly passes into Graham. Tough break. O'Galley couldn't convert the fast break. Oh, what a move! And yeah, now here comes intentional fouling. So now in bonus, that'll be a one and one, I believe, for uh, Graham. 52 seconds ago, Rockledge leads by eight, one and one coming up for Howard Graham. Got to make the first one to uh, get the chance to take the second. Well, we're going to find out real quick here. Because if he drops these, the lead becomes 10. And with 52.1 seconds to go, I've only ever seen that overcome once. That was Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils against my Maryland Terrapins. He actually did it twice to us. And one of those leads was 12. Thank you. All important first shot, no good. Great shot by the student section, providing noise, but Graham gets his own rebound and does it himself. And that might just do it. 10 point lead for the Raiders, 44 seconds. That's 45 seconds worth of clockwork down the drain 
because you didn't secure the rebound off the miss. And another steal, Graham, no one even in a mile radius of him. The layup is good, now Rockers leads by game high 12, 57-45, 25 seconds. That is gonna wrap it up for sure. 25 seconds to go here. This is Armstrong with it, he'll fire it, he'll hit it. It's a little too late with 15 seconds to go. White passing over to Graham, back to White. Away. 10 seconds all the way down to Orem. And Orem doesn't want to get fouled underneath Connolly. Connolly rolling around once. It'll be fouled with 1.4 to go. And so, so the Rockley's Raiders are gonna finish the regular season at 18 and three. Well, Galley's gonna drop to 14 and 15 10. and 10 now. Or 15 and 10. 14 and 10, 15 and 10. Um, uh, not a great stretch to end the season for the Commodores who started off 11 and two. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it, now now the focus on district tournament, maybe get maybe get third time's a charm against Rockledge, and that's what they're gonna have to do. Uh, Ogalley is everything but out of it right now, but um, you know they gotta they gotta put together a good stretch in district tournament uh, to make the playoffs here, and that'll do it. Your final score from Ogalley High School: the Rockledge Raiders 58, and the Ogalley Commodores. 48. Stay tuned. Coming up a little bit later on tonight, we'll recap signing day here on Brevard Sports Network. So as you heard my partner, Jackson, who's your player of the game for Rockledge? I would say Kamari Phillips. Yeah, I, I would too, to be honest with you. And right now, Kamari's got ice on his ankle. And if that's anything other than a slight sprain, uh, they got a couple days to rest and heal uh, as the Raiders get ready for a district tournament. One in which, should anything happen that they don't win it, and they are the odds on favor to do so. I certainly don't think that they wouldn't get an at-large bid. Of the Commodores, well, they, they, they've really got a target. They've got to at least make the finals in the district tournament. So for Jackson Robb, uh, I'm Alan slaughter I want to thank Todd O's, the athletic director, both coaches, Brad Lustick and Tracy Williams. Uh, once again, your final score, the Rockledge Raiders, 58, the O'Galley Commodores, 48. Have a great night, everybody.